Mining Minister details Mining Act review. White Ribbon Day commemorated. And traditional New Island welcome for tournament boxes. This is National MTV News with Lorraine Genia. Good evening and thank you for joining us. This is Thursday's News. On the third and last day of the 2015 PNG Mining and Petroleum Conference, Minister for Mining Byron Chan highlighted the changes made to the Mining Act and the development of six new mining policies. Mr Chan said the changes address issues of governance, compliance, best practices and sustainability. The minister said the changes capture the local content aspirations of the O'Neill Dion government. The morning session of the conference focused on the government's initiatives in the mineral sector. Minister for Mining Byron Chen said the focus of the new reviews in the mining legislation and the development of the six new policies address the sensitive issues of resource ownership and national content, which has been missing for a long time. As you're all aware, the mining sector has been the single largest export revenue earner for PNG for many years, since Panguna in 1967. After wide consultation, PNG has now legislated for quarry operators where, in the past, the state has lost out on so much revenue. People will now be required to get a license before any quarrying operations. Another important review on ownership of minerals will now include those minerals extracted from deep sea mining. The law maintains that ownership of minerals remains with the independent state of Papua New Guinea for the collective benefit of all its people. But we have expanded this to include the new frontier with deep sea mining. Reviews have also been done on the requirements at each stage of a mining project from exploration phase, mine lease application, construction, production, and even the closure phase. Minister Chan said a mine closure is expected to address issues of rehabilitation and reclamation. The biggest focus in this whole review exercise is sustainability. We must ensure the footprint left behind by the mine development brings about tangible benefits that are sustainable after mine closure. Mr. Chen said the changes and the restructure can enable Papua New Guineans to maximize the benefits derived from the exploitation of the country's minerals. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. The Mineral Resources Authority has put in place initiatives to encourage exploration during challenging times. MRA's Executive Manager for the Geological Survey Division, Nathan Mosusu, said the initiatives were introduced to mineral exploration in the country. Part of MRA's plan is a diversification program through geological mapping to find other metals apart from gold and copper, which may be of interest to investors. The Mineral Resources Authority is a regulatory institution established by Parliament enactment. With the current challenging times in the sector, MRA is now focused on doubling its mineral search by 2030. So we have decided to see what else we can find in the country, apart from gold and copper. I think we have been best about, because of this light, but this is one of our, one of our initiatives. It is actually a diversification program. We'd like to see, you know, what other metals are there that investors are interested in. Or, you know, if we can help improve, or if we can find alternative source of energy that can help prop up mining projects, that will be really good. So we have gone, we have gone back to the fundamentals. Geology is still the foundation of all georesources. That includes mineral, oil, and gas. And we need to ensure that our geological maps are updated. And we greatly value the work of our former colleagues. And I would like to here acknowledge the presence of Professor Hugh Davis. Uh, his contribution to PNG geology knowledge is immense. 
and he continues to contribute to our mapping programs. Thank you, Prof. We have one of our initiatives is the one to 250,000 seamless geology, where we intend to work on areas we feel that geology do not match properly, as highlighted in the adjoining map sheets. Mr. Mosusu said there are challenges such as cost factors. The challenges that we have faced over the years in, our, in all these initiatives, like all of you, is the cost of mapping programs. For large airborne surveys, we spent almost 10 million kina. For the geological mapping, we have spent between 200,000 to 1.6 million. In 2014, management was quite tough on us, so they, they put a cap on our spending. Mr. Mosusu said despite the cost challenges, it's an opportunity for MRA to forge working partnerships with the government and key stakeholders. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. All Search Limited has initiated a major drought relief program. It aims to provide much needed supplies of food, water and medicine to villages within the company's project areas of Southern Highlands, Hela and Gulf provinces. The dry spell and El Nino effect has signaled for immediate special attention in terms of relief assistance with the Highlands provinces among the worst affected. All Search Limited is one company that has come to the rescue providing relief assistance to villages living within the company's project areas in Southern Highlands, Hela and Gulf provinces. The All Search Drought Initiative will cover 94 villages with over 27,000 people. Drought relief efforts began in Kutubu villages of Kaipo and Sisibia yesterday with rice distribution, thin fish and noodles. So like in consultation, one them district, um, uh, district administration, one them provincial administration, so that you apply, you look him, or say, me apply come along here, me apply coordinate him, the one time. Despite falling oil prices, all search remains committed, putting substantial resources into the drought relief effort for humanitarian assistance. All search is also working with the National Disaster Center to ensure coordination and sustained water supply and provisions into affected areas. So you mean to stop lot time long good but also you mean to go me pla part play you pla you pla part play me pla me pla ama master lo kam na sanap na halfin you pla where me pla can walk him. For villages the relief assistance is a blessing in the time of need as water sources and food supplies have dried up. No one fight, no one complain, legally go big pla you pla must have a must like kissin because now I'm looking for the project to be finished. Women car project, some lot of the popular project to me, the holy one them. Me play in the water, no hot water straight, no hot guy straight. So me play talk thank you, the welches. Me play guy will boost binatang, na sack sack taso na me play stop. How can I mat loem karim? Because dry season so how can it be dry no more? The distribution efforts will continue in Southern Highlands, Hela and Gulf provinces in the coming weeks. Fabian Hakelitz, National MTV News. All Search Limited joined many countries around the world to observe the International Day Against Violence Against Women yesterday. A range of various activities were held across the company's different areas of operation. All Search staff staged an early morning march in its camps at Kutubu and more as part of the campaign. In their project areas, all search staff commemorated White Ribbon Day with an early morning march with a message. The message was clear, it's time for men to stand up and support the call. Uh, well, the work was basically about uh, ending violence against women. Uh, in PNC, you know, uh, PNC we have a culture that uh, uh, men normally uh, treat women uh, not well so basically this book was about uh, you know ending violence against women the women recognizing educated men who are standing up to be counted I think it just showcases a positive approach that most Papua New Guinean educated men are taking in taking a stand against all of this 
violence that our women in PNG are currently going through. So most of the men that are working are, you know, educated men, and it's good to see that at least with them being supportive towards this cause, it's going to go a long way. So. And the message behind the message? There is violence out there and it must end. Uh, this walk is, is a good initiative by the oil search community, um, showcasing that it's about time that violence in PNG came to a stop. I've heard a lot of dreadful things and it's really terrible what, what's actually happening out there. And uh, This is a way to um, bring awareness to not just oil search but um, the broader PNG community about violence. It's about time we put an end to it. Neville Choi, National MTV News. The International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women or White Ribbon Day celebrated yesterday ended with a commemorative dinner hosted by the PNG Coalition for Change at the Parliament House. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and Chief Justice Salamo India attended the dinner as keynote speakers highlighting important factors of the event. The dinner was also attended by business houses supporting the cause. White Ribbon Day, falling annually on November 25th, is a global movement where men take the lead to speak out against violence against women. Commemorating victims of violence, the dinner featured the White Ribbon Day candle lighting as well as songs and dance performances. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill said that in order to eliminate violence against women, more initiatives need to be set up and assures continuous government support. Victims do not always report what happens to them. Sometimes this is because of the fear of further violence. Sometimes it's because of shame. Or sometimes because our law enforcement agencies simply do not listen to them. He added that eliminating violence starts within the home where mothers must teach their sons to respect women and fathers set the right example. Chief Justice Sir Salamo India gave many examples of violence and added that in order to eliminate violence, the courts need community support. The women world over suffer unjust treatment, including violence in all forms, at the hands of men, and to me it seems it is one of the greatest human tragedies of life that that should happen. Origin Energy CEO Leslie Elitaviri, speaking for the business community, said that violence against women affects the business sector in many ways. In a recent survey and research initiated by the Business Coalition for Women to convince businesses to champion the cause of women through addressing violence in the workplace, the following results are alarming. She said it is a clear business case where businesses must lend their support in this plight. Lorraine Gabina, National MTV News. An accident along the Parparna freeway near the police headquarters in Kona today saw two vehicles colliding as the other ran off its lane. Residents nearby rushed to the scene upon hearing the loud noise of the vehicles colliding. The accident occurred between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. and is reported to be the second accident in the same area today. A CRV and a 15-passenger bus belonging to Christian radio station Radio Light collided in this afternoon's accident near the police headquarters. Accident vehicle is right down there. Let me do this uh, light form. And then this one right here was right uh, at the back. And when, when they dragged the pole, the pole went in. Must be out of vehicle on the side. Bystanders say the accident is the second one in the day as there had been another accident at 10 a.m. about 100 meters off the scene of the afternoon accident. Both vehicles were badly damaged, however passengers fortunately escaped major injury. I was driving out and that car was crossing on this side. Actually he was driving down this way, but I don't know what happened and they just crossed on that side and they hit us, the bumpers. Police swiftly arrived to control traffic along the freeway and attended to the accident. Lorraine Gabina, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. Drought claims more lives in Western Province and writs issued for West New Britain LLG by-elections. Those stories and more when we come back. Stay tuned.
National Family and Sexual Violence Committee today launched its referral guideline that enables effective communication between family and sexual violence victims and support service providers. The guideline was officially launched by Department of Justice and Attorney General. National Family and Sexual Violence Action Committee today officially launched referral guidelines to help the work of support service providers. The guideline has fixed processes to help FSVAC clients communicate their needs with their service providers at various safe houses or family support centers around the country. This guideline aims to provide an effective communication link between the service providers and people who go to them seeking shelter from their problems. And some partners don't comply with the organization's requirement to deliver services as they should. At some support centers, there have been cases where victims of family and sexual violence are forced to live in harsh conditions because there are no resources to meet their needs. Such resources include a room for shelter, a proper daily meal, and medication for those who are sick. Having the safe house guidelines, which we have now in place, but we're now reviewing it to extend it to include children and a company because a lot of children are seen now at the family support centers. The set of guidelines was launched by representatives from the Department of Justice and Attorney General. Colin Barilai, National MTV News. 49 people are dead and hundreds of others severely affected by prolonged drought and El Nino conditions in the Western Province. Western Province Inter-Agency Disaster Committee Chairman Richard Arias says access to clean water is now the main problem. The province is in disaster category stage 4 and 5. Water levels on the Fly River are still low. Transportation of goods and services into Kimga Town has slowed down and prices of store goods in isolated villages have increased significantly. As the hot weather pattern and El Nino conditions continue, access to clean water is now becoming a major concern. Right now, a lot of people are accessing Sego with dirty water. Disaster authorities in the province says a new red species that is believed to have entered from across the border with Indonesia is attacking food gardens in the West Ningrum LLG. Interagency Disaster Committee Chairman Richard Aria says Middle Fly Electorate is the worst affected. Most affected areas in the South Fly are like Kiwai, Kiwai LLG, uh, Oreo Mobituri, and Moed. North Fly District Disaster Coordinator Greg Isia says some people have gone to the extreme of eating clay to survive. Uh, Mogulu particularly has come, come to a stage where they've actually eaten clay for survival. As of last week, exploration and mining companies in the province have donated money totaling over 10 million kina for relief assistance for affected people in the province. Relief assistance will start rolling out next week. Quinten Alomp, National MTV News. The Marbe Provincial Government has warned leaders of the various factions involved in the fighting at Boundary Road Settlement to stop fighting today. Marbe Governor Kelly Naru told the leaders if the fighting continues, the provincial government will come down hard on them. Naru says the provincial government has the authority to order police to carry out a mass arrest at the settlement, declare a fighting zone and forcefully evict all settlers. At 10 this morning, various leaders of the different sides involved in the fighting at Boundary Road gathered at the Lay City Hall. The leaders have agreed to meet with Morobe Governor Kelly Naru and other provincial leaders to end the fighting. Governor Naru warned the leaders to stop the fighting as of today or face tough measures from the provincial government. He told the leaders to end the troublemakers to police. He says the majority of the people in the city prefer to live in peace. On Tuesday, a fresh fighting erupted between various factions of the community. Two men were killed, many others were injured, and houses touched. Fights have been ongoing since October between various factions in the area. The leaders have all agreed to stop fighting. 
Governor Naru will meet with the Provincial Law and Order Peace Committee tomorrow. The meeting tomorrow will outline points raised today. Mata Luis, National MTV News, Lei. Writs for two local level governments and three vacant wards in the Candrian, Gloucester and Talisia districts in West New Britain were issued by Intergovernment and Provincial Affairs Minister Leo Dion this morning. For Candrian, Gloucester, the seats were left vacant after the presidents passed away, while in Talisia, the president was suspended on misappropriation charges. The LLG by-elections will be co-funded by the West New Britain Provincial Government and the Electoral Commission at a cost of over 400,000 kina. These by-elections have come about following the deaths of at least four LLG presidents, a condition described by Minister Dion as a natural phenomena. However, Dion says there are areas where these conditions can be controlled and serious measures must be taken to minimize such matters. Uh, but I would like to also encourage once more the governors, provincial administrators, uh, district administrators, CEO, in order to appreciate the fact that and, and understand that without conducting, putting money for an election, you are denying the rights of the people to be represented and you're denying the right of the people to be heard uh, through the, uh, the requirement under the constitution. Meanwhile, provinces that have completed their LLG by-elections include East New Britain, East Sipic, Milne Bay, Northern, Morobe and Manus, New Island's Matalai LLG and Simbu's Kundiawa Urban LLG by-elections will soon follow. Supplementary elections for the other six Highlands provinces, apart from Simbu, whose LLG by elections have failed, are yet to be conducted. These failed elections totals 37 LLGs and 605 wards. Accordingly, I forward to you for your signature the following LLG reads West New Britain Province, Kendrian Coastal LLG, President. Kendrian Coastal LLG, Ward 4, Kendrian. Kendrian Inland LLG, Ward 9, Palan. Gloucester Local Level Government, Ward 8, Gurisi. Balivitu Local Government, President. The nominations of candidates contesting these elections will close on December 2nd, 2015. The polling will commence on December 7, 2015, and the returning of the reads will be in February 2016. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. A private hospital in the nation's capital will be hosting clinical assessments over the weekend with specialists from overseas. This falls in with the hospital's functions in improving the standard of care of families and communities. The Paradise Private Hospital that has been locally owned for two years now announced it has partnered with the world-renowned Fortis Healthcare. The team that will be arriving in on Sunday will carry out one-on-one -on -one consultation with patients who have adult cardiology, orthopedics and joint replacement, and nephrology cases. These are the major cases that many in the country suffer from. Uh, to say that uh, Fortis is a good hospital, one of the largest private hospitals in India, and they've partnered with us and they've given good reference. Patients who fit the profile will travel to the Fortis Healthcare to receive high-end medical treatment at a low cost. This is much cheaper than receiving medical treatment in the Philippines or Singapore. The assessment is open to the general public. This hospital is actually helping us to collaborate with you know, outside uh, specialists and see how we can move forward and meet those standards that actually are being uh, observed outside of, of this country. Paradise Private Hospital Director Dr. Robin Sios says PNG medical facilities have still to rise up and meet international standards. The last uh, 40 years uh, since independence, uh, most of the health facilities and the uh, services in this country has been compromised too much and there has been a lot of uh, a lot of equipment, a lot of you know facilities has has been constructed or has come up but none of them has actually really met the standards and I think this is where where Paradise Private Hospital is 
focusing to try to establish a, a standard in what we can be able to achieve. Marilyn Diaukatam, National MTV News. The decrease in the number of Australian scholarships has raised concerns among Papua New Guinea's midwives. The PNG Midwifery Society said women and children are dying because of unsupervised births and the government must ensure avenues are available to efficiently train more midwives. Currently, there are five institutions in the country that offer a bachelor in midwifery. According to Divine Word St. Mary's Vonopope School of Nursing, OSAID will possibly be sponsoring only 10 students next year instead of the usual full batch. During the recent midwifery symposium, nurses have taken up a petition to show their disappointment. Mary Magabe, who is leading the petition, stressed that there is a need for more midwives in PNG and that decreasing the number of scholarships is not a good move. We need more skilled workers. When we don't have scholarship, <coughs> then how can we train future midwives? That is the reason why I've asked you girls to sign this paper so we can um, petition the defect to reconsider their decision to extend the scholarship. The PNG Midwifery Society hopes that the government will assist in restoring the scholarships or finding mediums to train more midwives. Representing the minister at the symposium, Dr. Simbaug Biab assured the nurses that the National Department of Health would include midwifery scholarships under the department's human resource enhancement plan. The National Health Plan 2011 to 2020 was reviewed just this year. We did a midterm review, and that emphasized that fact that this country has a very, very small health sector workforce. And uh, the response to that is to very, very quickly build up the capacity for the different category of health workers for PNG. Uh, and we're going to be doing that over the next 10 to 20 years. The Midwifery Society expects to get more than 50 signatories for the petition and hopes it is enough to convince authorities. Melissa Govero, National MTV News. The Tari Hospital is now a Level 5 Provincial Hospital. This sees the management of the health facility transferred from Medical San Frontiers to the Hela Provincial Health Authority. The ceremony was held to signify the event with the swearing-in of hospital board members. The Tari District Hospital is now a Level 5 Provincial Hospital. The upgrade of its status also sees the Hela Provincial Health Authority prove its powers to manage and provide the essential health services to the people of Hela. Members of the hospital board were sworn in with the aim of improving the current health services at the hospital. To make it a much more efficient and a much better hospital to service the needs and hopes of all Hela people. Oil Sets Foundation will also be working closely with the hospital board. OSL Managing Director Peter Botten says the board will strive to provide a world-class service despite the unforeseen infrastructure challenges at the hospital. There is no doubt in my mind a personal commitment to bring world-class health services to Hela. The Medical Sand Frontiers or Doctors Without Borders who have been the helping end in the province will cease operations in March 2016. Witnessing the occasion was Health Secretary Pasco Kase. As a department, we work one time, uh, Mr. Peter Potten, as a general report, we hold in this Latari hospital, I must come up good one more. Como Magarima MP Francis Potape says the upgrade and new direction is for the benefit of the Hela people since health services have been lacking. Talking about real work, real people saving lives. Saving lives and this life. Jack Lepave, Jr. National MTV News. And now looking at our finance news. The Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.3375 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.3300 US dollars, 0.4514 Australian dollars, 0.3073 Euro, and 40.17 Japanese yen. 
Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold, coffee, cocoa and copra closed the day higher, crude oil closed lower, while palm oil and copper closed the day higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at one point lower, the ASX closed at 15 points lower, the All Ordinaries closed at 17 points higher. Your Thursday's news among stories after the break. New website for Sagari National High and Conference of Parties 21. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching National MTV News. The Sagari National High School in Central Province launched its official school website yesterday. The launch now places Sagari ahead of other national high schools in the country, making it the first to do so. The website was created within seven months. Creation of this website is one step the school has taken to encourage its students to use available technology in their studies while at Sugeri. It contains links to all tertiary institutions in the country and additional information on the history and establishment of the school. And I think it's, it's quality. School principal Kive Kerry Rambo says the website is not fully complete at the moment, but the launching is a positive step in the development of the school's IT department. It's not a fully complete, but once it is launched, we will continue to uh, add more information and it will uh, become very, very useful as you see. Electronic learning has become a faster and efficient way of accessing information. Since becoming a national school of excellence, the Sogeri administration has been investing in electronic learning. Currently, the students and teachers are hooked up to the school's Wi-Fi system and laptops were bought for teachers on a subsidized cost. The website was officially launched by Kairoku Hiri MP Peter Isoaimo and witnessed by grade 11 students and teachers. The inclusion of uh the website for this school, you know, opens up the opportunity for all your students, especially grade 11, to continue next year, you know, to, to use it to the best of your knowledge and ability and do as much, as, as much research as you can. The website is predicted to keep former staff and students informed on the development in Sugeri and act as a discussion venue on matters regarding the school. So, as a former student and on behalf of all those students, we are absolutely delighted that the wonderful work this school is doing to further your progress and your futures. Takla Gunga, National MTV News. PNG Health Support Workers Association members have voiced their concerns regarding the delay in the approval of the election of their new executives. They said the industrial registrar has failed to consider their request for an election of their new executives ever since the establishment of the PNG HSWA in August last year. Interim Secretary of PNG Health Support Workers Association Jake Suo told MTV Today that the election of the association interim executives has been affected by the continuous delay of approval by the Office of the Industrial Registrar. Suo said since the first appointment of the interim executive back in August 2014, it has been nine months now that the Office of the Industrial Registrar has not come clear on this. Two things there. Election. After the election, we need to sign, sign an agreement on a log of claim. He said they have also submitted a negotiation of their claims to the Department of Personal Management, which is still awaiting response. This delay is affecting the operation of this association as all activities are slowing down while awaiting the registrar's approval. As a result, all the interim executives and the 13 branch executives throughout the country will have to wait until the new executives are elected. This is done by the non support health workers. We manage millions of kina in the health sector. The PNG HSWA have a membership of over 1,800 non-clinical staff throughout the country. The staff played an important role in the operation of the National Department of Health. The government cannot say that, no, you are not clinicians, so you cannot be uh, taken care of. They have to look at our terms and conditions. Eric Arupman, National MTV News. 
Pacific Island nations are among other countries in the world at risk of being destroyed as a consequence of climate change. Their concerns have been echoed on various regional and international forums. It will once again take centre during the 21st session of the Conference of the Parties, or COP21, in Paris at the end of this month. Climate change is a growing concern the world over. Papua New Guinea, among other small island nations in the Pacific, face an ever-increasing threat. Papua New Guinea Prime Minister Peter O'Neill highlighted this effect during the recent APEC Leaders Summit in Manila. He called for collective action to mitigate the impacts of climate change on nations at risk. In the upcoming United Nations Climate Change Conference in Paris this month, Prime Minister O'Neill will be meeting U.S. President Barack Obama and leaders of threatened island nations. The meeting, scheduled for December 1st, is crucial for small island nations in the Pacific to push developed countries to take an active stand on climate change. Small island nations in the Pacific always maintain that they are not the cause of rising sea levels and extreme weather brought about by climate change. As chair of the Pacific Islands Forum, O'Neill expressed appreciation for the concern shown by President Obama on the plight of Pacific Island nations. O'Neill says they will be seeking a commitment from larger nations to help smaller countries at risk from climate change to protect their communities and ways of life. Mickey Cavera, National MTV News. You're with National MTV News. We have Trukai Sports up next with boxing teams arriving in Kavieng and our Ryan for Rio. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. A welcome gathering was held last night at the Peter Torrett Conference Hall in Kavieng to welcome boxers from around the country to the National Boxing Championships. Fighters from Bougainville, Manus, the Central Province, East New Britain and hosts New Island were present. Associations from all 22 provinces were expected to attend. However, there are some who will not make it to the event. MTV's Elijah Levette files this report from Kavieng. Heads of PNG Boxing and presidents of the different associations in the country were given a New Island welcome. Welcome, Lord New Island Villas Felix. The elimination bouts kicked off today without defending champions Team NCD. Unfortunately, NCD team couldn't make it due to uh, the booking backlog from New Guinea. Apparently, uh, we couldn't do much. Uh, the, the draws have been made and unfortunately they will not uh, take part in this uh, competition. Hosts New Island has entered the competition with two teams from the different associations in the province and has come into the competition as favourites after Bougainville. Youth Commonwealth Games gold medalist Thaddeus Katua will be leading the Bougainville team. Newcomers to the championship, New Mekio and Kaba, will be taking each fight at a time. The tournament is set to run for the next three days with the finals on Sunday. The official opening will be held on Friday under the presence of New Island MP Ben Micah and Minister for Sports Justin Chichenko. It's a pity that Team NCD could not make it this year to defend their title. This now leaves it open for the other boxing associations. Elijah Lavet, National MTV Sports, Caving. The 2015 PNG Sports Expo opened today at the Sir John Guy's Indoor Sports Complex. The three-day event will see business houses, stakeholders and other partners showcase their products and services. Event organizer PNG Sports Foundation has encouraged the general public and interested corporate organizations and individuals to be a part of the expo. Godwin Ecke reports. The Sports Expo is the first of its kind to be hosted by the PNG Sports Foundation with the sole purpose of educating and creating awareness of PNG Sports Foundation's structure and functions. 
The first day of the expo saw business houses and stakeholders showcase their products of promoting and selling sports equipment as well as providing professional information on the products showcased. Organized events and programs were rolled out by corporate houses and individuals during the expo on sports development in the country showcasing their products, programs and services to school students and interested adults that were there to witness the event. The event saw school children as well as athletes, coaches and other sporting body as part of the event. The, uh, P the PNG Sports Expo is all about promoting sport from the grassroots level to the professional level. Um, this is the first time ever Papua New Guinea has put a sports expo on for the benefit of everybody to come and see the different sports that they will able to play or they'll be able to be involved in. PNG Sports Foundation CEO Peter Samalili Jr. added the event is also to showcase PNG's vast interest in sports and to teach our people about different areas in sports. We are trying to harness what we currently have as an energy and translate that into success. Everything that is happening today, this sports expo, is a product of what has been created by the government. You know? And so we've proven that with the successful games. And how can we get beyond that games? How can we uh, uh, get that success and continue to, to drive that into the country? This event will also give the PNG Sports Foundation the chance to showcase the 2015 Pacific Games sports facilities and the public the opportunity to ask questions about each venue and information relating to sports. This event was to give the general public the opportunity to get professional information from experts regarding diet, proper workout, training, coaching and professional medical advice for athletes. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. PNG's Golden Fish Ryan Penny announced that he will be competing in the 2016 Rio Olympics. In an exclusive interview with MTV Sports, Penny said he is preparing and training here in Papua New Guinea. Ryan left the country today to attend the Pacific Games Council meeting in Vanuatu. Godwin Eki reports once again. During the 2015 Pacific Games, Ryan Penny won seven gold medals, bringing the Pacific Games to a successful finish. During the Games, Ryan's wife Carly told MTV in an interview that she would like to see Ryan Pini take part in the Olympic Games for one last time. We're trying to encourage him to go to Olympics next year, um, but it is a, a lot of training. Um, again, he, he is working full time now. He did take a bit of time off work to, for these Games to prepare. Um, it, it's up to him. Um, I would like to encourage him to just do one more Olympics and then then call it a day, um, but yeah, this will most likely be his definitely last. Today, Ryan told MTV Sports that he is training in Port Mosby at the Tarama Aquatic Center in preparation for the 2016 Olympic Games. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm currently based in PNG, so um, I'm training at the Tarama Aquatic Center, just getting myself uh, a good baseline to, uh, to, to get myself to Olympics. So there's a good couple of months coming up and um, yeah, mainly it's going to start off uh, big time next year where I'm going to sort of base myself more so down in Australia and that's sort of, um, you know, to get myself into some good competition down there. And then Ryan left the country today to attend a four-day Pacific Games Council meeting in Vanuatu in preparation for the mini Pacific Games and the next Pacific Games to be hosted by Tonga. Currently off to Vanuatu for the Pacific Games uh, Council meeting and uh, that's just a, a general meeting that we have but uh, we're basing it in Vanuatu because the mini Pacific Games are in 2017. So we're going to go and check out the venues, make sure everything's happening as planned and then uh, work on our meetings for the General Assembly next year. So um, a lot of work to do, we'll be there for four days um, trying to get everything down and, and right for um, the future Pacific Games. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. The PNG Barramundis have been humbled, losing by 201 runs to Afghanistan on the final day of the Intercontinental Cup, chasing a massive 390 run total. The Barras had their work cut out for them. They had a good start with Asad Vala and Mahuru Dai creating a steady 131 runs before Dai was clean bowled at the wicket. From then on, the fall of wickets came easily as the Barramundis struggled to chase the total set by Afghanistan, falling short by 201 runs. You're watching True Guys Sports. We have all the latest in Rugby Union when we come back. Don't go away.
True Kai Sports. The PNG Rugby Community and New Zealand High Commissioner Tony Fautua held a meet and greet last night in Port Moresby to honour the legacy of world rugby icon Jonah Lomu. The ceremony was small but significant as it highlighted the impact Lomu had in changing the game of rugby. While his passing comes as a great loss to the entire world rugby fraternity, it has also set precedents for world rugby to grow the code in the Pacific. Jonah, as I mentioned in my speech, is a, is a legend of the game. He's an ambassador not only for rugby, but as an ambassador for New Zealand. And also in terms of uh, promoting the game globally. Uh, like I said, um, it's sad that he has passed away. But out of sadness, there's an opportunity. An opportunity for his legacy uh, in terms of, um, of developing the game uh, worldwide. It's certainly something that I'd like to see as we get together. Former PNG rugby representative and someone who is held in high regard in the rugby community, Paul Joseph is one of the very few in PNG rugby who had the opportunity to share the same field with John Alomu, something he says he will cherish forever. Game, his power, his speed. I know I've played against Serbi, um, the legend of all legends in sevens, and to see. Jonah ran over uh, Serevi a couple of times in, the, in that game, you know, it just uh, uh, brought, you know, it gave us, especially the Pacific Islands, knowing that Jonah was a Pacific Islander and PNG is part of that, you know, Pacific family, you know, it gave us that um, encouragement to do, even though I never got to be as big and, you know, fast like um, Jonah. Papua New Guinea and brothers, Frank, Will and Nigel Genia who have played for Papua New Guinea and Australia are testaments of Lomu's influence. Huge influence in getting um, uh, myself and my brothers into playing rugby union. Um, and you know, we, we heard Israel Falau's comments earlier that you know when everyone uh, played rugby, they all wanted to be John Lomu. Um, and these are these are two three generations after the time after his time. So yeah, look, he's 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 had a massive influence, um, not not just on Papua New Guinea, but on you know um, on the world. Although unfortunate, Lomu's passing has drawn strength from the entire Pacific Island rugby community. He has left behind a lasting legacy that will remain in the game forever and has paved the way forward for many Papua New Guineans alike to follow. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. That's a wrap on your news and sports. Up next, your weather details for tonight and tomorrow. Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. And your weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Most centers fine while Kerma expecting brief showers. And that's your news, sports and weather for Thursday the 26th of November 2015. On behalf of the entire MTV News team, pleasant viewing. Good night.